Yes, sir. My name is Peter Schneider. I've been a Bethel resident since 1968. I went to high school in this building. I served on the permanent building committee with Richie when we converted this building from a middle school to the municipal center. We built the middle school and when we remodeled the police station. So I say that because it's important to know that you know that I got roots here. I believe after all these years in Bethel, I built my house here 34 years ago. And I can't afford to stay. 2008 took the wind out of my sails. <laughs> Anybody who's in construction took a beating in 2008. And we've been bouncing along the bottom ever since. Now, my question is this. <clears throat> People in the private sector have made adjustments. Instead of going out to eat, we eat at home. Instead of driving new cars, we drive used cars. We made the adjustment. My business value went from two million to 180,000. That's a drop off, and it's never recovered. And the reason I say this is because I'm not alone. My point is this, the private sector in Connecticut has made the adjustments, we're keeping our nose above the water. I think it's time for you, Mr. Governor, to lay down the hammer, renegotiate the CBAC agreement, and cut our expenses. It's not fair that you cannot lay anybody off so that we can keep our expenses and our revenue in check. Allison, now. Everything I heard today so far is roses and peaches and cream. Very nice, but it involves spending more money than we already spend, and we're already the highest, one of the highest per capita debt states in the country. Let's get the job done. Let's drop down the hammer and get to work. Well, Tens of thousands are going to retire over the next uh, three or yeah, four years. Yeah, but the pension is the question is, okay, since you're going there, they're going to get well compensated. Ms. Cushing, you're talking about employment or retirement security. Welcome to the real world with small business people. We make our own retirement security. We don't get 3% raises every year when the rest of the people paying the bills don't. What's going on in this state is immoral, unjust, unfair, and unsustainable. And it's time to make a change. And I have high hopes for you, Mr. Governor, that you can do it. I'm hoping that you can walk the walk that you've been talking. Our former governor talked about shared sacrifice. Yeah. He didn't have a clue about shared sacrifice. Yeah. So I'm hoping, it's too late for me. I'm out of here. I just can't afford to stay here. And it hurts. You can probably tell in my voice. But I hope it's not too late for other people. Oh, one more. Uh, I, I gotta, I, let me just say, yeah, you're not going to recognize this state government in the next uh, five years. That's not good enough for you. You're gone. You've heard it before from politicians. I've heard it so, since so we're we're going to make the changes you need to make sure your kids at least give uh, give Connecticut a second chance. My kids are out here already. Sir, no, we don't want to have a debate. We just. So thank you very much for your comments. And sir, with the, yeah, I think you were, 